Hello and welcome to Africanness Podcasts. Yes, yes, where we celebrate African culture and promote acts of kindness within our community. Now, we had our episode 2 series 1 last week and this week we will be having so many topics to discuss. In our previous episode, we had a captivating discussion with our special guests about the significance of cultural diversity in shaping a richer African identity. Today, we continue our exploration by delving into the role of the media, you know, (laughs) in all of these things, (laughs) as well as highlighting some unique festivals across the continent. Lastly, we will discuss how Africa Africans in diaspora can contribute to the preservation of our cultural heritage. But before we dive into our discussion in this series two of our second episode, let's take a moment to introduce our incredible guests for today. Joining me again is Shruk El Atta from Egypt, Dr. Oli Afolayo from Nigeria, Mara Makoni from Zimbabwe and Julie Kalungi from Uganda. Welcome back, everyone. (laughs) Yes, yes, it's a pleasure to have you all back. Fantastic. Now let's begin. Mara, I've got a question for you, Mara, just to kind of continue from there. What role do you think the media is playing in all of these things? I think the media, um, it, it, I mean, the media plays a lot, a strong role in everything, right? So mm-hmm. even if you to come back to this conversation around hair, in that we were, you know, you watch a television, you watch television, you look at your role models, and we we are told that your role model is somebody who digitally appears to you, and <laughs> appears to you somewhere either by on the news, on a movie, or an Instagram, right? It's in mm-hmm. digital format, and it's not even in a place that you can touch somebody and be like, you know, so it has a significant impact with, with, with you know, with without even going, be, uh, you know, without even um, going beyond in you know, other sort of sources of media, but uh, you know, just looking at television and the role that that plays on um, how we articulate, uh, how we speak, how we engage with society. But just even that people consume a bit more technology. So it leaves five minutes to talk to your parents when you're constantly on your laptop, constantly in, you know, in, in. so there's like 5% to influence a child who's got 95, 95% to what media tells them. Hmm. So, so you almost mm-hmm. makes it you makes it that much harder, but I I think um, I just wanted to go back a little when we we're talking about hair and one of the things I really wanted to say there is the thing about hair is when we looked at Western hair Western hair is you know when we looked at our perception we looked at Western the Western world and looking at hair it's like okay that's a nice thing you carry in your head there's so much more to hair. And I think it's worth then going back to what was special about having African hair. You know, it, it's an expression of art. You know, doing those cane, cornrows, you know, the expression of art, looking at Maasai mm. and how they do hair, the braiding, you know, you've got things called Senegalese braids and how, how you can tell which part of the country somebody's from, from how, how they choose to have their hair. Mm. And what that meaning was every every time you sat and, you know, you're having your hair braided. So, like, it was an intimate moment between a mother and a child. Mm. You know, that's where you and your mom had your heart-to-heart as a, as, as a girl. Mm. You know, that's when you really, as you're growing up. So I think there's something there to be, it's like, it's, it's not just the hair. It's about then bringing it back to but what is it about? Also, what was it? What made it beautiful to actually have African hair? It was the experience that came with mm-hmm. it. The day that you had your hair plaited, mm-hmm. the, the style that you chose and the articulation of art from different cultures and how it varied. Mm-hmm. You know, people would have knots, like Bantu knots and everything. And you could actually express, you could actually tell, at some point, you know, back, back in the day, you could tell two, two different people from two different tribes yeah. from hair. So it was articulation, actually, of hair through culture. And that is not something you see, you know, you see in a lot of sort of West, I, I'm, I'm, I'm generalizing here, you see in a lot of Western. Well, so when we're growing up, you see TV and everybody has long hair. It loses that meaning of what it meant sometimes when you sat with your mom and she's pulling your hair and, and you know, the shampoo person. But, you know, I just always remember that moment when it was just, it was just me and mom. It was never me, my mom and all my siblings. It was me and mom at that very 
moment of sensitivity <laughs> and her trying to get my hair done me trying to cry we went through so many emotions together there you know her chasing me trying to wash it comb it and then making me the most beautiful person that my friends were going to see the next day at school All that right. was an entire experience <laughs> mix but again it's it's just but then when you start to watch television and everybody has uh, duck and lovely and then if, yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, the beautiful woman in the movie is the one with the hair that comes up to there mm-hmm. that lost its meaning because when i went to school when my hair was braided and it was cornrowed or plaited i was showing off my mom's gifts Oh, and so. You were very lucky, Mara. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I see this. <laughs> when I, I look back on, when I look back at the first thing that, the they did was shave our heads. Well, she, she, she. I grew up with a shaven head until I got to, um, I don't know what what grade it is yeah, but she was well, just the, the grade before just university, hmm. yes, which is senior six in Uganda. We were we were shaven. We were we had to have very short hair. That that was the hair. You know, oh my God, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, so yeah, but, the way the, the, I didn't have those moments. You know, even the process of, of my watching mother it, doing my hair, I, I was feeling quite envious. Why right? I think I didn't have that. I didn't, I didn't have my moments of short hair when I was growing up. I had that with my daughter. I learned to literally braid so that Absolutely. she could have. I was like, my daughter said, never, never getting cut, and she literally <laughs> cut it off. All of it in order to grow her natural hair. I was in tears. I was like, "Let it grow. We'll cut it slowly." She said, "No, I don't like this straight thing. Off, <laughs> off with it." And she had it cut. She literally got her scissors and cut it herself, and it was really long. We'd grown mm. it for years, so yeah, the hair thing is a very emotive thing, and I can see where <laughs> where it comes from because that's like beautiful. But what you've just painted. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Had you. Moments with my daughter, and I didn't have that at all. It was off to boarding school. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Wow, this 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 discussion is definitely rich. You know, you all remind me of the word of the UNESCO um, director general who said it is precisely because of its profound uniqueness, mm-hmm. its diversity, and its richness. Mm-hmm. that african heritage is universal and commands our att- attention so you know if you look around you there are people who are i know a lot of people who don't look like me who have braids on today you know they wear our attires they listen to our music they appreciate you know our our culture even maybe even more than we do you know which is the irony of it all um, but you know we can do better thank you everyone now there are questions i want to ask you all because you know this is a time to learn also uh, talking about festivals and ceremonies i would like for each and every one of you to take me to north africa south southern africa west africa east africa let us join in the realm of festivals and ceremonies where african countries and regions proudly embrace and celebrate their cultural heritage so let's go from the land of pharaohs to the bustling streets of lagos okay the majestic plains of zimbabwe and then the vibrant hills of uganda let's yes. take it away. tell us about you know the festivals and the ceremonies that you enjoyed Hmm. Well, so obviously we have Eid, which is shared by most Northern African majority Muslim countries. Uh, we've got the big Eid, we've got the small Eid. Uh, and I remember the first time I came here in the UK, uh, it was close to Christmas. And I was like, oh, I get to like, you know, celebrate their Eid. I was so excited. And it was Christmas Day and I was like... I'm going to go to town and celebrate it the authentic way. And I went to city centre and everywhere was closed. <laughs> and that is not how we celebrate. That's not how we celebrate Christmas too, just like as a, you know, global capitalist uh, celebration. Um, mm. And everybody is out on the streets. All the shops are open. Everything is open. And I was just like, where is everybody? Um that was really strange but we also have Shemin Nassim which is more of a pharaoh uh, uh, festival and it's close to Easter here but uh, we we eat like fermented fish 
for it and it's really lovely wow yeah oh. well thank you for sharing that i'm going to look more into that i love it see i'm learning a lot thank you sure god bless you all right Take us to Lagos or take us. Okay. I want to hear about the Oshun Space Festival. <laughs> Please oh don't tell goodness. me you know about it because I watch uh, it. You, 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 you are testing me. You are testing me. Uh, but <laughs> what I what I will tell you is I, 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 I have been in a festival uh, okay. once. And um, it was uh, a festival of the river goddess. Mm. So, um, and what we were told, all I remember is being really scared as a young boy, <laughs> because what they said was, um, we, we went down to the river and then we had to walk back and we had an aunt there who said, don't look back. If you do look back, something will happen to you. <laughs> And so I just remember being so scared. Wow. <laughs> okay. I must not look back. You might have sand into the <laughs> Wow, yeah. I, I still have no idea what I was worried about, but yeah, I just remember being really I, I can guess what you were worried about. Because, you know, <laughs> it's funny because we had this um, strange stories of m the mermaid. And then, you know, I got in here, you know, everybody's saying, mommy, this, but I'm like, <laughs> Remembrance are cute. Especially, especially if you if you also happen to be a Pentecostal, you be binding and losing. Yeah, like you'll be binding and losing, and you yeah. have, you know, they have the mummy tail. The oh, the cops has mummy. This face mummy blew up. It's like you, you all have an idea. Do, do you really know what the moment is? But, but, but um, um, but, uh, <laughs> as a as an old alternative to a non-terrifying experience what i will uh, i can also talk about is uh just the amazing art so uh, all of the different bronzes and i was always amazed of just the genius behind the creation of those and you know uh i i think as far as uh uh, festivals or replacement for festivals go that, that was something to be really celebrated oh wow thank you so much dr Oli. wow okay so take us to zimbabwe <laughs> <laughs> yeah we well, um, take us to zimbabwe we, we, also, we also do have uh we do we have a fair share of stories about mermaids um you know I, you know whether that was done to deter people from swimming in rivers or not mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. so. probably yeah there i mean everybody always knew somebody who cited who cited somebody who they knew had seen it but you never <laughs> had to find first hand first hand but um i mean a very the, unlock less monster <laughs> <laughs> um, do you know what? Uh, one of the things that I, I you know, in terms of when, when I look back at absolute old uh, and uh, some of these uh, ceremonies, I never were part of it. It's quite interesting. I mean, there'll be, um, you know, the slightly more controversial one, like, you know, the circumcision ones where, like, the Nguni <laughs> tribes, where, where it was a big thing, you know, mm -hmm. for a man coming of age. And um, those are sort of things that you look back and think, well, well you know, sort of phased out. But, you know, the principle of circumcision still still remains, but the, 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 the culture around it, the big coming of age ceremony where things that have dropped off um particularly in the spiritual world in Zimbabwe you know we we had a, a lot of belief in our ancestors um and which still maintains and a lot of people still believe to a large extent they still balance this in a certain way because obviously as we move to Christianity Mm. Um, so we had prominent ceremonies like which was called one of them was called Mashawi, which was pretty much when the spirits or the ancestors came to. It was a day where you know you brew African beers, and then um, they would speak through a person called Inganga, who's like a not witch doctor per se, but almost a medium to a certain extent. And this is when the ancestors were would channel their wishes and their desires through mm. through people. And then you had another one called um, Kurova Gova, and I used to attend these. I, I think these are still being done, but light touch. So this is where, for example, if somebody dies, so the unveiling of a tombstone is the equivalent here. So you people mm -hmm. do that after a year, right? Um, but in Zimbabwe, it's also the point at which a person returns to their family, but almost mm -hmm. in ancestral form. 
So it's that mm-hmm. celebration. So he always brought that together, the unveiling of tombstones. So I think these, and then he had the whole taking of the beer to the grave and, you know, bringing, it's, it's your spirit coming back home, but obviously mm-hmm. being, you know, going into an ancestral form. So those, mm-hmm. those were very interesting ones when I was growing up. Oh, yeah. Well, that's because I like drinking the traditional beer, right? I was going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A little, like, you know, like the, I don't know if you've ever heard the famous South African song, Um Tomboti, like, you know, with Yvonne mm-hmm. Chagas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> that, that would be that sort of ceremony where, oh, you know, yeah. when everybody drinks and we all pass and mm-hmm. even the basho, you know. And then wow. we have we had another one called i think it was Ukwerere, and this was the rain dance and i think these are actually quite prominent you know where uh, across africa again you have these spirit mediums and um the, you know trying to channel you know to bring the, the rain gods and all of that stuff and then we have other things like you know the naming ceremony which was pre- predominantly when somebody has died and their name has to be handed over to somebody else so they well, also, we have that we have yeah. that in nigeria exactly and yeah. then there were the kugads wanaka which is when a widow is given a new husband either you take on the brother you know the the, the brother, the brother. Yeah. yeah so a lot of this stuff when you go around the continent it's they're all pretty mm. much the same in the same context mm. yeah. i think what might differ is how elaborate they are yes. so for example if i look at a nigerian traditional ceremony that is that is that is <laughs> Next that is big, you know. I mean, we, for example, we would not turn up with a lot of traditional gear, not so much. Debeles, probably yes. Uh, Shauna's, I haven't seen that much of the, the colorfulness of that. It's it's more the day for me, perhaps, is every a lot of Zimbabwean men claim to hate hate it because they have to give away money, they have to give off money. But mm-hmm. for me, it's it's one of the most culturally still something that is so culturally rich to me in terms of you really understand the importance of that family network mm-hmm. when you go to beg for somebody send you know you suddenly have to go find the uncle the third uncle from somewhere where because that's his position because he was actress so you suddenly have to really go through your family tree mm-hmm. when you come together as two families you you bring together that family you know bringing together of two families and then having to trace who's who which is was why even for us Zimbabweans having a totem is very important because yes. it was meant to deter in, in incest for example incestuous marriages mm-hmm. because you know people because of big names like Makoni so ours is one of the more biggest sort of family umbrella clan name as it were um, but you'll find little pockets as people broke away into little pockets in fighting and all of that stuff but we all know we all unite because we all are totem as a buffalo fantastic so yeah so there's a there's a lot of these little ceremonies but i feel like when i if i go around africa i'll find variants of each and every one Oli was talking about the river god. I think that's the equivalent we, we've had, you know, we've had sort of equivalent. But for me, my favorite is always that um, that traditional uh, marriage ceremony because I feel like it it really still reminds you about certain aspects of tradition that are very important. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it kind of what you just said now and what just thinking about this idea of, uh, of you know, the sort of river goddesses and, and that kind of reminds me of what something Shrik said at the start, which is, we, we often associate progressiveness with mm-hmm. westernness when actually when you think about a lot of these ideas and the the what 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 guides them a lot of these values uh, are actually at a very advanced stage uh in 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 africa you know so you know we think in the north you got queen uh, amina who was a powerful uh um uh, warrior um, and is often spoken about, and to some extent has been what I call Wakandified now in the, in in popular culture. But you know, these are these are things that were there from the very uh, for, for for a very long time. So uh, Africa was doing feminism before it became popular. <laughs> Oh well, thank um, you. Just, just to add to that, Oli, it is quite true. Like you know, we we talk about feminism because even in my family, uh, particularly my clan, um, because if 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 somebody like your mom is a chief's test, then we all it's actually matriarchal, very very matriarchal. You actually take on your mother's surname. I actually have my mother's surname, so you know, it's actually mm. feminism existed. In, yeah. in Africa, but somehow there's often a narrative about women being so far oppressed mm. that they have to. But there's a lot of very, you know, some of the great queens have come from mm. Africa, you know. So yeah. there's, there's it's, it's yeah. a very, it's, it's very important. <laughs> I just thought yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Part yes. of that re- retelling of a story that, mm. you know, there's so much work to be done on that. Uh, yeah. not, not nearly enough. Thank well, you. You should look into the Uluguru tribe in Tanzania. They are a matrilineal tribe. Wow. The women decide land issues, wealth issues, all things connected to growth and uh, community building. The women make those decisions. Children belong to the women. They do. Oh, wow. The children are named after the women. Uh, so uh, it's a very progressive tribe in, in Tanzania. But, you know, you would think, oh, in Africa, all, all women are, you know, they're the property of the man and all that stuff. And it's not true. It, it really oh, wow. is. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, you know, I'm sure had to step out of the studio because she has another engagement. But, you know, we love that she was here and we keep the fire burning. So to you, Julie, take us to East Africa. Wow. Um, we, we have similar traditions and cultures in terms of, uh, you know, what Mara said about uh, if someone dies, what happens? We have ceremonies around that. We have ceremonies around children that are born. Who names the child? Um, in in my tradition, the Baganda, the grandfather names all children. And if there's no grandfather, then whoever took on the name, as Mara said, will name your child and give your, your child a name. And every name has a meaning. And, um, and in and every name comes from a specific clan which has a specific totem. So mm. I am from the leopard totem and uh, I, I could never marry anyone from the leopard clan. My children can never be connected oh, to someone wow. from my clan because they'd be marrying their mother. Mm. So if you go deep and you dig deep, you'll find that we are all connected in the leopard clan mm. somewhere, somehow. We come from the same one. We call it tree, actually. A tree so as in that person burst the whole leopard clan so if you marry wow. from that clan you'd be marrying your brother sister cousin someone connected <laughs> to incest you we don't do incest in 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 buganda and uh and and the the one tradition that i really love is when a woman is getting ready to be be, be betrothed like the pampering i got and talking about myself <laughs> no I got before I got married. I've never got it again because <laughs> oh, wow. you are allowed to stay in your bedroom. Someone work, comes and wakes you up and tells you your, your bath is ready, and they, come, they wash you. They they, they they do your nails. They they, oh, wow. they put ghee oh. on you <laughs> like <laughs> for ghee, but it, it smells lovely, and your skin glows on your wow. wedding day. And you, you are really looked after. And wow. so obviously, they're getting you ready <laughs> <laughs> for pregnancy, really. They're making sure you're really ready really? and relaxed to have the baby nine months later. But, no. <laughs> but I, I do have this friend from Uganda who was telling me about this the role of the auntie. Ah, the aunties. Yeah. yeah. They really yeah. do look after you. They don't do it so much anymore. It's more about the social media and taking pictures and all that. And I'm I'm really oh, sad man. for this generation because they're not getting the proper traditional cultural pampering that, oh, wow. that our parents and I was lucky enough to get before I got married. And yeah. then after the wedding, you go back to the room. Obviously, the idea is don't come out until you're pregnant. Um, really? Yeah, and a few days later, they come and That's take over the whole ceremony. Um, it's called Okuku Oku Jomugole Muchisenge, getting the bride out of the. Bed. Let, let's try to say that. And say it slowly. Teach us. Oku Jomugole Right, Dr. Oli, take it away. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> Dr. Oli, take it away. Okay, so the Oku Oli is the bride. The car is not going. It's hard to take it away anyway. The only, no, the only term I've, I've really used in, in, in Uganda is bana. Do you want to try, 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 can you say it again? 
chalks you can be it means any whichever way you want to put it that's what it is but now can you can, happy can you say that previous time like again i want to try you want to try <laughs> the one, yeah. really? mm. john the first one the one you <laughs> the, the one i threw the challenge at you right yeah yeah, yeah. but you gotta say it first though slowly Uja. So it's the end of the honeymoon. Really. Uja, so um, so um, no, the Yoruba man can't try. Lots of food. Oh, wow. I love it. I love it. Thank you so, so much. You know, all these festivals we've talked about. One thing that I know for sure that we have in common is the drums. Mm. The drums, if, you know, there's a saying in Africa, a festival without drumming is like cooking pot without fire. So, you know, every African festival is announced with the drums. So, so beautiful. So these festivals, they ignite our spirits. They unify our community communities and the reminders of the power of our cultural expressions so you know i'm saying we, we have to keep telling our stories we just have to and you know it's not just us telling our children again we talked about you know people stepping out to tell the story on our behalf and then you know it's tweaked and there's so many irregularities. Uh, and I was just going to say, I saw a video of the Osho, Osho Festival. And there were lots of white people there making documentaries. Mm-hmm. And you can say the same for all of these festivals we've talked about. They're, they're cashing out on YouTube. They're, I mean, they're stealing from us. <laughs> they're cashing out on YouTube because we're not telling our stories. Yes. So yeah. we need and of to course- start. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And of course, there there is also because um, uh, obviously African people have migrated over uh, uh, o- over the years uh, in terms of slavery. And so, if you go to Cuba, you go to Brazil, there are ver- there's a very strong embedded, entrenched uh, West African, in particular, uh, uh, tradition that is even more what I call concentrated than what you have in Africa today. Uh, naturally, because that tends to happen if. You people migrate to a, a certain place and many of those people uh, within uh, Brazil you don't actually have to be of African heritage to embrace it it's it's so ubiquitous now mm-hmm. and it, it, it is uh, very very heavy, he- heavily um, uh, uh, subscribed by people who believe that it somehow brings good fortune and you get these videos of people and everyone there is white obviously some of them will have our African heritage but it's uh, many generations back and they they express a lot of these uh, um, uh, uh, traditions, African traditions. So in, in, in a way, you could say that it is certainly um, eternal and sustained because it's all over the world. Mm-hmm. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. So very quickly, you know, because of our time, I want us to just talk about other ways to preserve this. We've talked about storytelling. Um, we've talked about, you know, word of mouth, the parents. Uh, and, you know, how do we, what other things can we change? Is it the media? Because, you know, sometimes I want my children to watch even Nigerian movies. But then they have all these scenes that I don't want my children to watch. Do you I see? Am- so how can we, and I'm, I'm, I'm asking as a parent, how can we preserve this, this heritage that we're talking about? Just very practical tips. Um, write the stories down. Everyone thinks that you have to be an author to write things down, but write things down. Mm. You know, write things down for your children. Um, then tell the stories instead of reading them the bear read them the story you've written them from your culture mm-hmm. and um, the other thing that uh, my grandmother my, my grandmother bless her soul before she died say like, why did you ever speak any language other than luganda in your home that's mm-hmm. why your children don't speak your language because what, you speak the foreign language to them and i'm like the foreign language and she goes there you see speak your language in your home mm-hmm. and then when you're telling them stories you tell them you tell them in your language and that way you hit two birds with one stone telling mm-hmm. them a story in a language that they will learn because they are enjoying and they want to enjoy the story 
and then you're passing on these these amazing legacies to them so they can also tell their children and, and well thank you julie thank you for that mara um i i, I think uh, you know um I'm, I'm trying to think um you know i suppose i have nieces and nephews and and such and just thinking yeah maybe there, there, there will be a difficulty so like i said the amount of time that you get to spend with kids and versus what you've got to undo from, you know, teaching them a language over five hours versus 15 hours of trying to speak in another. But I also think there's a, there's a reason such organizations like Africa Kindness exists, right? There's a reason why advocacy, grassroots organizations exist. And it is now to start to challenge whether or not that, why can't a British syllabus actually have African history in it, you know? Mm. So it's two-pronged. Um, as as people who belong to a profession, as people who belong to certain social social organisations, we need to use a collective voice to try write those stories into everybody's history. Mm-hmm. Because it has to be the, the also taught where they're spending those 12 hours. Um, but generally at home, there's... there's, there's um, there's a lot that we can do. And it also comes to, we're also in a world where some of these digital tools are so much more accessible than, yes, we need to make the content and we need to make the material. So mm-hmm. we need to bring about the movies which articulate this culture. Mm-hmm. We need to, you know, to, to the standard that they can be shown on Netflix. We have the resources, right? Look at what what um, Wakanda Forever did. What Black Panther did. Everybody mm-hmm. up and, and to watch a movie in the afternoon. You know that that's going quite far, Mara. Yes. Because there's a, there's a story on Netflix. It's called Three, the longest third date, and it was these two young people who got stuck together during COVID, and they just mm-hmm. recorded their their journey. No Wakanda resources, nothing. Just their smartphones and and, and, and Netflix bought it. So we don't need to have the Wakanda resources. We can actually, like you say, create content. Well, it's it's not... and, and, and I wasn't mm-hmm. saying, well, I suppose it's not about having Wakanda resources, but it's almost just saying what the power of articulating culture mm-hmm. yeah. did in terms of everybody walked away and had a great sense of, you know, I could see elements of even Zimbabwean culture, like the Rory Empire and how that was built around a huge fortress that was impenetrable, mm-hmm. um, you know, all of that stuff. So I think there's two things, just really taking some of our culture as some of us are the sort of first generation especially you know in, in diaspora and stuff as being you know much closer to the ground and thinking now we need to crystallize it in a way that's accessible with all the tools via media via mm-hmm. via i don't know societies that we have around ourselves to find ways to get it out of there because it might it might be trickier to just say well you know i'm gonna you know i'm gonna teach you child at home and stuff but I think there's 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 every every layer of society almost like from the organizations from us to smaller communities from us to churches. You know, I still go to church where they preach in Shona because uh, <laughs> out of nostalgia. But you know, things like this. I think there's there's different layers to it uh, beyond the story is um, the advocacy and the advocacy that we live by mm-hmm. in in our actions and our deeds. Wow, thank you so much. So, Dr. Oli, do you have any advice for Africans in diaspora as to how they can also preserve their culture? Yeah, I, I think there's so much that's been said already that is uh, really powerful. And um, I think that there is uh, a certain degree of uh, mentoring, uh, the sort of uh, mentor and the mentee and all of this. Um, I have uh, been around many parents, many African parents, and actually when I spoke to Bumi and I think about the reason that Africanness was created is they have this tension. They have children who are um, kind of living one reality at home Mm. and living another uh, in school and are struggling to kind of reconcile those two aspects really authentic aspects of their identity and sometimes parents uh try to reproduce the community that they've left uh in scotland or in leeds or in 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 in, in cumbria that's so far away from the child's reality that um they find it really hard to deal with so I think it's that kind of, I, I think there is a certain degree by which we must embrace that contradiction 
as mm. people who are African uh, and embrace it in the sense that understand that it is difficult. The village has changed, yeah. right? Yeah, the yeah. And, and the that's right. The village, the village has changed. And, you know, Julie made that point at the very start of the, mm-hmm. of, 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 of the show that the means by which certain cultural uh, cultural values are, are uh, expressed are different, and cultures evolve, just naturally mm-hmm. evolve. And 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 so, uh, in one sense, I remember listening to a version of Fela Kuti's uh, the Broadway show, and getting really annoyed listening to these African Americans <laughs> using some of the terms that Fela would use with yeah. you know with a, a dreadful uh, or at least what I thought uh, uh, pronunciation <laughs> and uh, accentuation um, but I also have to accept that to a large extent how do we preserve Fela to the person who's here who's, who doesn't know what the shrine looks like or never heard of it before well you got to live with that contradiction and live with the compromise uh, and and the, and the, and, the, and, the, and it is that that is uh, important so i think there is a there's an extent to which if we put the arts to one side and put the culture to one side and accept that some of us we embody and we just connect a little bit more every mm-hmm. every person who is from our community who happens to there is that point of connection and the only way we do is perhaps being a little kinder <laughs> to the younger generation mm-hmm. and learning how we we bridge that gap not being the typical auntie or uncle in church that <laughs> basically will pull the air of this young <laughs> you, you know like what are you calling this that and the other who are you saying hi to <laughs> get down on your you know do a dobale for me right now <laughs> in dobale yeah in dobale the greeting is, is yoruba is, is, is a way of you do, way you greet your parents you basically do a press up every morning anyway <laughs> <laughs> uh, i love that you put it that way dr ali thank you <laughs> but, but yeah i I think it's just li- living with that contradiction and getting mm-hmm. comfortable with it. And I was just say one last thing uh, to, to, to end this. I heard a quote recently that blew my mind. It took mm-hmm. me two days to try and figure out what they were talking about. And it's not an African saying, but it's a really it's deeply true. It says the the past is in front of us, mm-hmm. and the future is behind us. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I thought, especially as a scientist, I thought, mm. that doesn't make any sense that, that, you know, how can the past be in front of you and the future? And mm. it makes even less sense if you're a Pentecostal. No, my past is gone. The history <laughs> we're making is now. Yeah. Wow. But, what, but, 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 but then I realized that the conception of time amongst the Amaran people is time is viewed as a person, as a thing, as a tangible mm-hmm. thing. And so if I think of the idea that my child who's looking at me is the future, Oh, and wow. I am that present or that past, then mm-hmm. it is true that we are we have an opportunity here to create the stories we're talking about, we're the ones who will write it. The things that we're, the mentoring we're talking about, we're the ones to do it. And mm-hmm. so we are that we are that past that is in front of the future. And it's that world that we create that they will walk into. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. You know, I, I feel like this is the time to give this proverb now. Okay. <laughs> they say back home, okay, in Africa, a tree without roots. Okay, let me say that. A tree without roots <laughs> cannot survive the storm. <laughs> I feel like I'm some kind of piece of you know. I, I, I feel like we should have said, when you said a tree without roots, would have said, eh uh-huh. Okay, let's do it. A tree without roots uh-huh. Uh-huh. cannot survive the storm. Uh-huh. <laughs> wow, wow. So good. It's been super, super amazing as we come to the end of this enlightening episode of Africa Inness Podcast. Let us reflect on the key points discussed today. It's been super amazing. We delved into the connection between our cultural heritage and our identity. We've talked about festivals, storytelling, the role of the parent in passing this, our cultural heritage down to the next generation, how we preserve the African heritage. And we have to remember, and I'm talking to our listeners and our viewers, stay kind, stay curious, 
and stay proud of Africa any day, anytime. Your children are watching you. And it's the way you carry Africa that they will also carry it. So, you know, there's this word of the Malagasy proverb guide, which can guide us. It says, a boat doesn't go forward if each one is rowing their own way. So you see, the way we came together today to make this a very, very um, educative episode that people can even refer to in the future and just learn so much about Africa. This is Africa right here. Together, let us grow in harmony. Let us embrace and, uh, and support our, one another in preserving this cultural heritage. It's very important. But I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to our amazing guests. Thank you. Shrook is gone, but thank you, Shrook from Egypt, Dr. Oli from Nigeria, and we have Mara Makoni from Zimbabwe, and Julie Malungi from Uganda. Your insights have really, really enriched our, our understanding of the African culture and heritage. Thank you so much. So, you know, before we part ways, I encourage each one of us, each and every one of us listening right now to know that, you know, in your own way, your culture is unique, but never stop, never stop showcasing the African culture of heritage. It is important. Thank you for joining us on this extraordinary, and I mean it, extraordinary journey until we meet again remember to embrace the tapestry of the african culture i love you all and i'll see you next time bye bye <laughs> thanks for tuning in to africanness where we celebrate African culture and tell our stories. We hope you've learned something new and gained a deeper appreciation for the continent. <laughs> Join us next time for more conversation, more stories, and more kindness. And remember, our past, present, and future are interconnected. Awala Matushe, it's up to us to shape the narrative and create a better world for our children. Until next time, Eva Badu, stay kind, stay curious, stay cool, and of course, stay proud of your roots. Awalani Africa.